Well, there's a lot of excitement among the class. They chose in aerospace engineering to do this as their big project in applying what they learned in class. And as it's come together, they probably are amazed that as a high school class, they were able to put together 14-foot rocket. And uh, they've done very, very careful work today in making sure that the payload is ready to go, learning how to pack the parachutes, get the uh, separation squibs ready to go. Uh, got their first experience in assembling a solid rocket motor. All of those things are uh, definitely memorable parts of a high school career. About to take the Tripoli mentoring test, and uh, this is a, a, a nationally created test for students under age 18 uh, to demonstrate their proficiency on the technical and safety aspects of launching uh, high-powered rockets and working with a mentor. Uh, when they're out on an active range, uh, they'll be accompanied by a triply certified individual, in this case myself, uh, and uh, they need to know uh, how to act on a live uh, rocket range. Uh, otherwise, they're prohibited from actually being out on the range uh, and would normally have to just sit and observe. So this will allow the students to actually be actively engaged in launching and flying their vehicle. I'm Mark Moonline, and I'm a senior at Valley Christian High School, and um, I'm on the Launch, uh, launch and propulsion team. Um, so pretty much what we do, what we're in charge of is uh, the launch sequence and then uh, loading up the motor when we're actually out at the site. My name is Eliza Roque. I'm a junior here at Valley Christian. I'm also on the launch and propulsion team. So like Mark, we worked, we will work on making the motor while we're at the site and also installing that. I'm also in charge of making sure that all the subsystems were intact for this project and that everything was covered. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm Wade Myers and I'm part of Separation Recovery and my job is making sure that the rocket separates as planned and comes back in hopefully not one piece. And your involvement in the rocketry program, why don't you talk to me a little bit, your name and what's your uh, responsibility? I am uh, Maximilian Mueller, and I'm on the airframe team, and so is Michael here, and we are responsible for making sure the airframe makes it to, uh, to 10,000 feet and does not fall apart in that process. So. Hi, I'm Alan Spears, I'm on the airframe team. My main responsibilities on the airframe team this year was I made a cat of a nose cone, and the transition section I had to communicate with mentors and try to make sure it was getting done correctly and would work. My name is Chris Leagy. I'm a senior at Valley Christian as well. Um, I was on the airframe team as well as Alan and I worked on some of the design of the rocket including the design of the fins and doing that all up in rock sim and then being able to convert that into a CAD design of the rocket. I'm Chase Banch Garcia. I'm a junior here at Valley Christian. Uh, the best part of the project is, you know, working with my friends on making making this awesome rocket and really just getting closer with them and really using our knowledge, you know, for a real-world application. Hi, I'm Danny Ginther. I'm a senior here at Valley Christian, and I am part. I am the leader of the launch and propulsion team. Uh, my team deals mainly with the motor. All it has to be what type of propellant, how we set it into the rocket as well as um, basically being the system engineer for the entire, um, entire project and class, making sure all subsystems, whether stated or not, are being accomplished, and making sure everyone's on task and providing checklists to make sure we don't miss a step and all that. I'm Richard Yoon. I'm a junior, and I'm from South Korea, so I'm an international student. And I am in the payload team for the rocket and my responsibility was making calculations so we know what we're trying to add on for the payload and what's the diameter of other weights and others. So uh, right now I'm helping out Raul over there to actually assemble the payload in the right place. So yeah. Hi, I'm Rahul Tiwari. I am the deputy project leader of the payload team and currently I'm working on the 3U payload, um, which will be ejected from our rocket, and um, right now 
we have our airframe that's being built, and um, we need to mount it on the rocket in such a way that it can be ejected, and then we have to place our parachutes on the rocket and make sure that all the avionics um, remains functional. So this is the transmitter, it's the M48 SHX-1, and over here we have a similar unit, that's uh, the receiver, which will be placed on the ground station, and this unit will be placed on the 1U. Okay. So just gently, just, just very gently. Okay, second bomb, we're going to just push now. Hi, my name is Chris Manderson, I'm a senior at Valley Christian. Um, my involvement is I'm a part of the propulsion and launch team. Um, we basically are in charge of making this rocket go into the air, pretty much. We're in charge of the motor and everything basically from from probably here down. Um, I was also recently assigned to separation recovery team. Basically, we have to make sure this rocket separates into three pieces and we can find it after it comes down. Um, my favorite part about this project will probably be when we get to launch it and um, I enjoyed machining it and basically putting it all together. Um, we're gaining enough thrust in order to keep straight the rocket to keep it stable. We have to be on the launch rail for I think about 20 feet until we can become stable and we have a straight flight. Propellant to light, you need basically your your, your pyrogen is going to generate a thermal flux, right? That, that that radiative energy goes down into the propellant. It causes the gases to break down, um, and, and it causes the aluminum to melt. When the aluminum uh, melts, the outside immediately reacts with the oxidizer and forms a um, uh, aluminum oxide, which actually creates a crust on the outside. And then a, the aluminum inside melts and expands. And when it expands, it cracks the aluminum oxide around the outside, and the aluminum actually ejects out up into the up into the gas phase uh, flow. This is a tone beacon on the 3U portion of our payload. Um, it's going to repeatedly uh, beep, and when we when it deploy, when it separates and hits the ground, uh, we have some way to find it. So this is uh, Valley's AMSI catering truck feeding the kids, and they're all over there testing radios. Is that the APRS going? Yes, it is. How cool is that? Really cool. All right, all right we're real close to flight time. Go for it. Yeah, because it self-adjusts. Hold on. Do you know what the giant is like? Is it on something? Or? Are you okay? He's going to you move. Put it one in the one blue eye. Oh, yeah. You want another one? Okay. How does she have to go? We designed this and we know it will work. <laughs> we guarantee 10,000 feet. Guaranteed. What happens afterwards? I like how the shrapnel is just going with the wind. To the right of the range station. You can always see when it does the separation. Oh, there it is.
by that out of BlackRock yeah, we already, we already, in Nevada. We already said that. After we do that, if everything has been successful, then we can consider putting a second stage on it. And uh, with a single second stage of the same size P motor, we would uh, be able to take it probably to just around the Five, four, three, two, button. Oh, <laughs> my